Sanders joins Calling All Sports with Rock and Manooch now on Fox Sports 910. All right. Frank Sanders now joins us here on the right Twitter guest line. How you doing today, Frank? Well, very good, brother. Happy Monday to you guys, man. Happy Monday to you. I, I want to kind of do an audible real real quick. We have uh, this It's Your Call question we do with State 48 Roofing. I want to get your thoughts on it. If you had a vote for the MVP this year, uh, here are your choices. Brock Purdy, Lamar Jackson, Christian McCafferty, or maybe other. You maybe because you're you're a cowboy fan, maybe you would go with Dak Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> Way to slide that in. Yeah, I gotta get it when I can. Really you know that. Nice Come time. on. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they were your uh, rival like for so many years, you know. <laughs> oh, he dropped passes on purpose when he right. played against the Cowboys. Ooh. Not Frank Sanders. <laughs> well, nobody would throw to him. I mean, he needed to. <laughs> well, they'd throw the tight ends and those. Well, no, they did. They didn't have tight ends back then. Jake threw it down the field. <laughs> so, Brock Purdy, Lamar Jackson, or Christian McCafferty, or someone else? I'm taking Brock Purdy, man. Okay. I'm taking Brock Purdy. All right. We just had. Uh, yeah, I like, I like that. We just had John Skelton on. He he went with Christian McCafferty. I'm going with Christian McCafferty. So is. Uh, uh, Jimmy B, but you know, he's, he's, he's well, all about, he, he loves Purdy. Not only myself and Frank, the guys that actually know football, uh, Brock Purdy, 43 and a half percent, McCaffrey, 34.8 in Lamar, leaping Lamar, 17.4. I like Other Lamar, but three. three more games, three more games. Hey, have you seen hey, look, when you look at the, when you look at the San Francisco 49 you're not cheating yourself, right? Let's just be honest. They got, they got, they got a multitude of talent. On offense and defense, this team is stacked. Um, they, for, on, on the fifty-three man roster, they got the best fifty-three man roster in the NFL. I mean, top to bottom, without a doubt. But when it comes to the commander of the ship, mm-hmm. who's running it, who's making it happen, who's making the decision, it, it's Brock Purdy. We're talking about a second-year quarterback who was Mister Irrelevant before. And you want to ask who's running the offense now? Yeah, look at the quarterbacks that that, that would be the top guys. All those guys are first-round draft picks or. Well, considering Dak, Dak's the second round draft pick, but when you look at the performance, how fast he adjusted, what he's doing with this offense, look at his last year's statistics, what he's done last year to this year, the kid hasn't dropped off at not, not one beat. And I, I, I mean, I, I like what I see out of him. And if he keeps this up, I think he should be the MVP. Thank you, Frank. Couldn't have said it Could better you, myself. Let me ask you, Frank, if you put Kyler Murray in that 49er offense, would he have just as much success? Uh, with Kyler's ability to run, I think that uh, he he that he that more probably really um, just depends on. Let, let me let me back up. Yeah, would um, you please? Because that doesn't no, I think you're right on. Yeah, Keep me, going. I'm with you. Stay with that I, thought. I, these these knuckleheads the, have the, no the, idea. Let me back up. Kyler me Murray, statistical please. Statistical numbers. Well, just statistical numbers. You're looking at him. Statistical numbers. He probably add maybe could add more in the rushing. Okay. Well, this this offense that he's playing in right now doesn't require that. It requires a guy that makes great decisions, um, can filter through any the multitude of defenses that teams are throwing at him to try to stop these three studs in in Kittle and Dab and Debo as well as Christian McCaffrey along with this offensive line. So I, I don't know. I would say that what Brock Purdy has done in his second year in the NFL has been absolutely amazing. And his ability to keep the 49ers not just relevant, but the number one team in the NFL. I mean, he's making those decisions. And I don't, I'm not sure necessarily a guy with legs um, and as, as his number one strength uh, will be able to make those same decisions or, or you know, or, or back down and be able to run that offense the same way. That, those, are, those are the differences when a quarterback has the ability to run and a quarterback that can run. That's, that's, those, are, those are night and day differences. Brock Purdy trusts his training. He trusts his eyes. He trusts his pre-snap reads, and he and he just let it. And he operates from there. Guys who have the ability to run, if anything comes off, they 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 use their legs. And we've seen that with Kyler, without a doubt. Kyler, Lamar Jackson, and we can just name the plethora of quarterbacks who has running yards. But what Brock Purdy is doing in that offense, it's it's. I mean, it's. It takes a special quarterback to do it, and he's showing it. And, and I think, Frank, what, that, that's the one thing right there. These kids, you guys understand the intangibles that you're seeing with Brock Purdy, looking things off, play fakes, coming back. And you just nailed it right there. He comes off. I counted three different progressions yesterday, being there at that game, coming off. Kyler Murray never do that. He might go one, two, and then he takes off. And on top of that, 
staying in the pocket. So a lot of people don't see the full realm of, of what's going on. They see at the athleticism go, oh, yeah, he'd be great in that. Well, sometimes that that uh, that's a blessing and a curse, having that ability. But what Brock does, he sees the entire field. And to your point, understanding what the offense is, because this is one of the most complicated offenses in the national football. You have quarterback after quarterback. See, Brock gets understands it where I don't think Kyle would be able to understand it from this standpoint of wanting to be uh, to take off too soon. That's what people don't see is the intangibles Brock running yeah. this offense. You know what I'll add to this here <laughs> is if you ask the top 10 receivers in the NFL, which quarterback would they want to play with in that system? They will give you the answer. And mm -hmm. it's damn sure going to be Brock Purdy sure. because he's throwing the ball. Any, 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 I don't want to. I don't want to play with any quarterback that can run. I don't care. I'm not out here running these routes for you to run, <laughs> run for me to turn into a blocker. Forget that. That's just being honest, Rock. I, I don't know about you and but Jimmy I'm, and Jimmy. I'm these Rock and Jimmy, you hear that, Jimmy? I want to see the ball thrown. And 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 how do you, and, and speaking of that, how do you feel? And and that I don't know if you were there or not yesterday, Frank. So being there at field level, watching the passing game of the Cardinals and all the receptions going to the tight ends. Guys, receivers were open down the field. He came off the reeds, I mean, Kyler Murray, and he would take off. Or I, I would be a little disappointed if I was one Frank Sanders in this offense going, look, we get it. We understand that you're comfortable going to your tight end. You trust him. But my butt's open three or four times. I had bigger plays, maybe touchdowns versus first downs. And I thought about you last night, Frank, watching this game going, Frank Sanders would not be happy being open down the field and coming off the reed where the read was there and going to my check down to my tight end. I, I know I just was watching this yesterday. You know, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the maturation of Kyler and his offense that we, we get to watch right now. Um, will he come off that read or the first read or the second read? That's, you know, that, that's a touchy subject in that regards because you, we don't know the offense, how well the offensive line and what they're doing in regard to that. I would say that I'm, I'm in agreement with you in regards to as a wide receiver, if I'm open or if I feel like I've been open several times and you're getting the ball out your hand for other reasons, when I go back to grab that little, that little, that little pad they give us on the sideline, mm -hmm. I'm looking to see. Could he have pumped it just one Three. second? Or could, was I the first read and then he just came off and went to the second read immediately? Or was I, was I the second read and he just went to his progression to start running? Like that to me would be the question once I grab that little Microsoft pad. If, if, if he's making the best decisions at that moment and we're getting the, and the, we're getting the flow of the offense in rhythm where we can kind of really begin to go and the quarter and the coordinator can get to play number 12 and 14 and 15. I'll have to accept that because we're struggling to try to try to put together a win. I mean, there's a difference being on a losing team with a quarterback trying to make things happen and being on a winning team with a quarterback that can just sit back and watch things come, come, you know, things happen. So, um, Kyler's Kyler's progression in his offense is definitely it seems like the tight ends first. And again, we're watching Trey McBride just absolutely dominate. That's that's the answer. Like you're watching I have to look at, you know, from the left to right, and I'm looking at Hollywood Brown or I'm looking at Moore and I'm looking two minutes to my right and I see Trey McBride and the next guy Wilson. And Trey's the one that's getting open first. He becomes he becomes the first you know, he becomes the first subject. Ross, the idea of the offense is getting the ball out to guys who are open. And if you know how to get, you know how to attack a defense, or attack your guy that's trying to cover you, and he's the one that's getting open, that's the guy that you're going to find who's going to be the hot ticket that day. Frank Sanders is our guest on the Right Toyota guest line. Frank, let me follow up. Has the front office, in your estimation, and the coaching staff seen enough now of Kyler Murray where they can make the determination at the end of the season, uh, and I'll use the cars, will he stay or will he go? I think they have. I really do. I think they have. And then it becomes like a, in my personal opinion, I think he's shown more than enough to comprehend this offense. Um, we're realizing that we don't, we're, again, we're not, we're depleted in talent on our offense. One minute. Our defense. Guys are hurt and injured. Hollywood Brown didn't complete the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this, the, the league in itself is just a better product across the board overall. I mean, just across the board. You look at the, you look at the AFC North and, the entire division is seven and six or eight and five. Like that's not something that you thought would have happened out of that division, considering, but that's how good the league is as a product as a whole. 
when I look at Kyler Jimmy B, I would say that I think he's definitely shown shown the shown the Cardinals enough. He's shown Monty what he could do. I think he's shown JG if he has leadership, is he is he composed enough for the next couple of years that we can use this guy as a, as an option to see uh, is he something that we can we can continually build on? I think so. Yes. My answer to does he stay or does he go? The value out there right now for the quarterbacks um, in the NFL um, is a tricky subject. College football is, they got the next top five that are coming out, and these guys are being told that they're going to be the top draft pick. They got to pay Kyler his contract. The, co- the quarterback contract in the NFL, Jimmy B, is, is absolutely ballooned crazy, mm-hmm. and, the act- the, and the return on the investment is not there. And so keeping Kyler, I would say yes. But in my in, in the back of my mind, I think there's a lot of hesitation between the Cardinals and the fan base. Frank, Merry Christmas to you. We have a gift for you, but uh, you got to come see us to get it, and it's something I know you need uh, on a weekly basis. So, it's, what? yeah, what? Is no, it a stopwatch? For my no, <laughs> no, no. It's something better than a stopwatch. But you could use a stopwatch maybe to speed up the game for this gift I'm giving you. If that makes sense. Okay. I look forward to it, my brother. I appreciate that. You I got it. Frank, Merry Christmas, man. Love you, you man. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you next you year. Guys, see you, Frank. <laughs> That's uh, the one and the only 87, or excuse me, 81, Frank Sanders, uh, who joins us here on the Right Twitter.